Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design Now, and today we're going to be making our own rubber rollers for printmaking. Now I want to give a huge shout out to Ross Mazupapa, who kind of come up with this idea of casting rubber rollers for printmaking. It's a really brilliant idea. And if you don't know, you know, the cost of, well, decent rollers that you use in printmaking are really, really expensive, especially once you start getting up into the large sizes. If you get up to anything that is, you know, over, you know, 12 inches, for instance, they are in the hundreds of pounds to buy. Uh, I've always wondered why they are so expensive because they are just essentially a rubber roller on you know, just a spindle with some handles. And I've been planning to try and make my own for quite a few years now. So I was really happy to see that Ross has done a huge amount of research into this and he's come up with his own way of doing it. So let's jump into it. Let's uh, go through the process of how exactly I made mine. Before we do that, I want to quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you need any type of fabrication from PCB etching to CNC machining, PCBWay can help you bring your design into reality. Or maybe you just need advice on how to bring a product to market, PCBWay can even help you with that with their turnkey OEM services, ranging from proof of concept prototyping to full design assembly and distribution. Whatever it is you need, PCBWay have you covered. I've opted to 3D print the inner core of the roller. So what I'm doing is I'm just 3D printing a hollow core and then because I've got loads of polyurethane sitting around that I haven't used in years, I'm just using it up to infill that to then make it a solid core. So I'm also adding just a little bit of chopped fiberglass just to give it a little bit more strength and rigidity but honestly it doesn't really need it because it, this roller isn't really going to come under a lot of pressure. You can see that because my polyurethane is so old, it does actually foam up and that's because water has basically got into it. So I've got to chop off the ends here. It does end up being a little bit messy, but it'll have to do. To cast the actual rubber itself, I'm using an acrylic tube here. This is just five millimeter thick acrylic tube. It's quite expensive, it was 30 pounds to buy that thing, but obviously I can cast as many rollers as I want from that. Now I'm using a 30 short polyurethane rubber. This is just a two part system. You mix it together, I've got my core, and then at the top I've just got a spacer just to make sure that that inner core is concentric with that Perspex tube. Probably did this a little bit wrong because the rubber, I didn't put any sort of a release around the 3D printed parts. So you can see that when I've pulled it off, it's actually left that impression of that 3D printed part on the rubber. Now here's where I really screwed up. I tried to cut off this excess rubber to try and clean up the edges. Don't try and do that. You cannot saw rubber. The other part as well, because I didn't put any release agent on the bottom of it, I really had to kind of yank off the rubber roller from the 3D printed part. Cause an absolute mess, try to chop it off. This was my first iteration. It works, I 3D printed just a frame and a handle to put it together. It rolls out ink very nicely, but it didn't really look very good. And because of the design of it, it would fall over, which is a little bit annoying. I did clean up the edges with a scalpel, but yeah, it's just a mess. Let's try and do it again and hopefully we will improve it. So what I'm doing is I'm actually printing a longer inner core and that's to make sure that when I add that top spacer on the top, it's not actually gonna come in contact with the rubber, so it won't leave an impression in it. So here I am, I'm just setting it up, got a 3D printed part at the bottom just to align top and bottom, and I'm adding this, another alignment on the top. Now it's time to pour the rubber again. It's just a two-part system. You mix A and B, the same measurements, you mix it together. I did try to get rid of the bubbles of this, but it's very, very difficult to do. Ideally, you do need a vacuum chamber, which I've just purchased because I was not happy with the bubbles in this casting, as you will see. I'm trying to pour it in as slowly as possible to get rid of the bubbles, but honestly, you just cannot get rid of them. You can see how many little bubbles I've got in this thing. Now, it doesn't actually ruin the surface of the rubber. These bubbles are inside. The actual outer layer of the rubber is really nice and smooth. After leaving it to cure, it was time to get it out. Now this is really difficult to get out. I put a little bit of vegetable oil in it just to lubricate it and I'm just using my arbor press here just to kind of release it a little bit to move it up and down to get that oil worked into the edges. I'm not sure if my mold release just isn't good enough, but this was a real, real struggle. This was about half an hour of trying to get this thing off, uh, but we did finally get it off. I chopped off the end and now it was time to just put some threads in it. And this has come out much, much better. Also notice that the core is actually thicker, so I'm not using as much rubber. You really don't need that much. 
all I've got is, is 12 millimeters each side of that thing. Now it was time to make the actual handle and the bracket that's going to hold this rubber roller. This is actually footage from a previous video. Uh, I've just sped it up and I just want to show you exactly what I did. I machined a aluminium part. This was going to be the bracket that holds the roller and also the handle. I'm just putting in some thread and this is the frame that I'm cutting out of plywood and obviously I'm sealing it because you're going to be working with you know soap and water and oils you don't really want it getting into the wood the handle is very simple just plywood glue together and then I'm just shaping it into a little bit more easier to hold shape and there you go that's all it is just an M10 thread goes into it into the nut and now it's time to put the thing together so I just use an M6 bolts to screw the brackets onto either side of the roller and then they just attach to the wooden frame. You could also 3D print this. Um, I'm actually gonna 3D print and I'm gonna actually maybe cast some in ep epoxy as well to experiment with that because wood is not really ideal, but it does work and I do quite like the look of this. So how cool is that? I've been able to make two brand rollers. I've got about one third of the polyurethane rubber that I use left over. That kit cost me 24 pounds. So, so far I've been able to make these two, which are probably really all I'm gonna need. I'm not sure about the US, but in the UK, the, the biggest rollers, hand brayer rollers that I can find are a 64 millimeter diameter. This is an 80 millimeter diameter. So it's huge, it's got a 250 millimeter rollout length, which means it's just much easier to uh, ink up your plates. And if you compare it to kind of like the, these are the things I was using before. These are the original rollers that I got with a, a printmaking kit from years ago. You can see the size difference. These are just really annoying to ink up. Literally after one up and down across a plate, just the ink is completely gone. This will cover it much, much easier. In the description, I will be sharing the 3D printed files. Basically, uh, this H design is much better because it keeps it much more stable when you put it down and you can 3D print it and you can 3D print the handle as well. So you can make these really cheap. So it's just amazing. Again, I want to thank Ross for kind of doing all this research and coming up with this way of making rollers. Supposedly the polyurethane rubber will last you about five to six years. It's not going to last you as long as kind of like the the natural rubber rollers that you get. But again, you're talking about hundreds of pounds if you want those rollers. This does the job really, really well. And again, you can always just recast the rubber roller once it does start to break down. He's said he's been using his for a number of years now, everyday use, and so far no signs of any sort of breakdown. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check the description for links and files and also check out Ross's website. That is it for today. Remember to like and subscribe. It really does help tell YouTube that you like this type of content. But that is it. I will end it there. Catch you later.